Well, if you're considering upgrading to the new Rogue Glide, this video is for you as I'm gonna walk you from front to back and everywhere in between on this new machine and tell you if I believe that it's worth upgrading to. I'm gonna talk about the pros and cons and all of the things that they've changed with this new motorcycle. Now, of course, this is just my opinion, but I wanna hear from y'all after the video. If you love the changes or if you hate them, leave those things down below. And if you like what I do, consider subscribing. Let's go and get into it. Now, Harley flew me out to Las Vegas to be a part of the press ride event for these new motorcycles. So if you're looking for the Street Glide or the new CVO Road Glide ST review, those videos are coming soon. And let me just say that my first trip to Las Vegas, it is nothing like what I was expecting. Once you get out of the city and off the strip, this is an absolutely beautiful place and so the scenery for these videos are going to be much better than what you normally get and again I am super appreciative to Harley for this opportunity but nothing changes here there's still pros and there's still cons in my opinion and I'm going to put all of that in this video of course now I want to start up at the front because it would just be unfair uh, to not talk about the new fairing design they have totally reimagined this thing and so when you kind of think, you know, there's only so many things you can do with this, but at the same time, they've added some really nice contoured lines to it to give it just more of kind of an aggressive approach. The headlight itself, it almost, it almost looks like it has dual headlights, even though it's a single unit. And then of course you have that W shape uh, LED lighting that runs underneath it and on the sides of the fairing. They've kind of contoured the lines where the top of it comes up over uh, the headlight just a little bit. And then, of course, it kind of has a little bit of an overbite down at the bottom. Uh, the new fairing, not only does it look a little bit smaller to me, in my opinion, and that's probably just because of the way they did those contoured lines, but it definitely has a unique appearance. But you still look at it and you see shark nose fairing, you know, so they didn't reimagine it so much where you're like, what the hell kind of bike is that? You know, uh, it still looks like a Harley, still looks like a Road Glide, but definitely more attention to detail in the fairing itself. Now, unfortunately, we didn't get to ride at night at all, but what I can tell you is that new light looks really good. The new fairing uh, with the new windshield design too is actually pretty cool. Now, we all know uh, from the Rushmore project and on, that we had a little button that we could, you know, push to open up the vent and the fairing. And that button would sometimes work, sometimes it wouldn't. So Harley decided to get rid of it altogether a couple of years ago. And now we have a much better design with a lever that you can move up or down so you can close the wind off or you can let it open. The new windshield kind of has a clockworks design to it. Um, and so it looks really good. And of course, I'll talk about the riding and all that stuff here in a little bit. So I'm not going to leave you hanging there. Now, staying up at the front, we still have a non-adjustable front suspension, but they have retuned it as well. And then we also have a new contrast cut wheel. So it is a black wheel, but it has the like aluminum contrast cuts in there and it gives it like a two-tone appearance. Brembo brakes in the front, in the rear, dual rotors in the rear, Dunlop tires, 19 in the front, 18 in the rear. Coming around to the other side of the fairing, we have the new 12 and a half inch display. So we're doubling the size of what the Boom GTS was and we're replacing all of our physical gauges with digital ones in this new operating system. Not only that, we have the addition of ride modes. So you have rain, standard, and sport modes available. And then there's also a custom option. So the custom option is going to let you change things like, you know, engine braking and ABS, cornering, traction control, all of that kind of stuff. You also get different appearances in the Skyline OS. So if you change it to, you know, sport mode, you're going to get front and center the tachometer. If you change it to touring mode, you're going to get the navigation in the center. But you'll always have access to all of your main gauges, of course. But what you see front and center is dictated by uh, the mode that you're actually in. We also have wireless connectivity now, so there's no more WIM module that you have to buy, which is fantastic. So, you know, if you have Bluetooth or whatever, you can set that up through your helmet. Now, we still have the two little compartments on the left and right hand side of the fairing underneath the speakers, but they're actually useful now. They've redesigned them where it will fit bigger phones with cases on them, or like we found out when 
whenever we were out there, you could actually put a freaking water bottle in them or a stick a GoPro in, in, in one of them. Uh, and the right one actually has USB type C. So a lot of modern updates there. And like I said, they are definitely more useful. I mean, before you couldn't barely fit, you know, but a, a, a towel in there or something just to wipe your bike off with much less a phone. So uh, they have redesigned that as well to be more useful. Also have a new handlebar setup. So we have 27 degrees of angle that we can actually adjust that. And what I'll say is the new handlebars are so much better on the road glide. The way my seating position was, and again, I'll talk more about this here in a minute, but basically my arms were out in front of me. I had a dip in my elbows and it was just super comfortable. And of course, being a road glide, you can adjust that in the riser very easily, or if you want to change them out, you can do that easily as well. Now, the gauge position is way different than what it was before. You have all your volume buttons, push to talk, starter, all of that on the right hand side. On the left hand side is going to be your cruise control on top. You have your traction control button on top. Uh, you can cycle through your menus, go to your settings, and of course, we have our left and right turn signals on each hand grip. So the controls do take a little bit of time getting used to, but I feel like they're in pretty good locations. And one thing I appreciate that they did is they actually put like raised areas on each one. So if you have smaller hands like I do, you can kind of just, you know, thumb it, thumb it over this way and be able to actually, you know, adjust them without having to move your whole hand position. Now they also have an adjustable brake lever on the right hand side and we had the perfect group to test this out all kinds of different ways. So no matter if you have small Burger King hands or huge hands like Traveling Tall, Be the Boss of Your Motorcycle, Matt Laylaw, one of those guys, it can accommodate any type of rider. We now have a redesigned six gallon tank. So again, you will see the contoured lines in this thing. And what I really like, uh, which is my favorite color, is the whiskey fire. So sometimes when you would look at the bike, well, you know, one part would be in the shade, the top part of the tank would be in the direct sunlight, that top part is going to be like this blazing orange and then the right hand side will look like a little bit darker burnt orange or sometimes even red in a bunch of shades. So it was really cool to see, you know, you have this teardrop appearance still, uh, but the tank kind of looks a little bit longer. It also looks tucked more up to the engine. So there's less space there. Uh, but, uh, you know, aesthetically, it looks really cool from the top two and from the side when you're looking at all those contrast lines. We also have a new tank lid design. So no more do you have to, you know, the, the stuck lids on there. This one is actually, you know, spring loaded. It stays attached. So you don't have to worry about, you know, the cap, you know, falling off and taking it off, all that kind of stuff. And they also have an anti-splash material in the tank as well. Now, since we're on this, they're actually using a lighter gauge steel on the tank. And so they were able to shave like 16 pounds total off of the motorcycle just by doing little things like that. Uh, so a pretty cool design. We also have a new seat design. Now, the seats are, are new all the way around. Uh, so none of the older seats are gonna work, unfortunately. That's one of the cons there for sure. But I did find, you know, just rough estimate. We probably rode out of an eight hour day. We probably rode for maybe four or five of that um, with plenty of stops too. You know, we all, you know, you want to check things out when you're at a place like this. Um, and I can say that my back did not hurt. So whether that was the frequent stopping, the new seat, new handlebars, I don't know, but Typically, my back would be screaming at me. Um, it starts screaming at me within 45 minutes to an hour, and I fortunately did not have too many issues, no issues that I can think of while I was there. So that was really good to see. Now we also have the new 117. So this is gonna give you like 22% more horsepower than the old 107. It's gonna give you 4% more horsepower than the old 117. So all the way around from the 107, 114, 117, it's going to give you more horsepower and torque. And while some of those numbers might be minimal from the 114 to the 117, or even the old 117, it's still an upgrade. And another thing that is a huge upgrade on this bike is the water cooling system. So the way the new cooling system is designed is that it actually goes to the rear head first 
providing you the most amount of comfort. Now, again, I didn't get to, to try this in stop and go traffic. Thankfully, we didn't run into any of that. Uh, but if and when I get the opportunity to ride this more and actually ride it in more real world type of conditions, I'll be able to let y'all know how that actually works. Uh, but they also have, of course, a fan on this new design, and that is pointed downwards away from the riders. So they've done little things like that to hopefully keep, you know, riders more comfortable when you're in stop and go traffic or you're doing slow speed drills. And then coming back to the saddlebag. So we have a new contrast design here. It gives it more of a sportier look. The stretch saddlebags are out and the sporty design is in. You have contrast cuts towards the back there and again you have contoured lines in these now they're not all they're not only redesigned i should say but they also actually provide you more storage so they stick out just a little bit on the sides so internally it actually is more storage and then we have the new fender and so the new fender actually incorporates the uh the flush mounted uh brake and turn signals like we're used to seeing on the old cvos and by the way, the bullet turn signals have been replaced all the way around. So on the front, they're actually that W style LED. That's what your turn signals are gonna be. And then on the rear, of course, we now have the flush turn signals. No more running light below the bullet style. It's just those two little strips right there that give it a super clean look. That's all of the new details, but how does it ride? That's what we need to talk about now. And this is one of the most exciting parts about this because we got to spend some real time with these motorcycles. And of course we could swap out as much as we wanted to and stuff like that. And that's, that's cool too, because you get different perspectives from different bikes, whether it was the street or the road glide. And I'll say, I, I didn't want to get off the road glide. I did eventually get to the street glide. I, I had to, because I wanted to bring y'all that review as well, but this thing fit me so well. And the general consensus from most of the creators and design team and everybody that was here at this event is that shorter riders really like the street glide because everything is, is just right there. It's closer to you. I just prefer having everything a little bit further away from me and especially the handlebar design, the seating position and the front floorboards. It all felt really natural. And fortunately, even though we do have a touch screen, of course, with the new system, I still found myself most of the time just using the controls on the handlebar. So reaching and stuff was not really an issue. And of course, seeing anything on this new uh, screen, it takes up the entire interfering almost. Uh, that's a bit of an exaggeration, but you know what I'm saying? Uh, it, it is much easier to see, which is a good thing. And the fact that I can just move everything from the controls on the left-hand side, I don't see a need to really have to reach down and touch the screen that often. Now we have new shocks in the rear with three inches of travel. I didn't adjust anything, right? And so I will say that it took the bumps really well. It took the corners well. It steered in really well. So it was an exciting motorcycle for me personally. Now, the difference between um, you know uh, regular mode or road mode and sport mode is significant too. So this is something I've been talking about on the Challengers and the Chieftains for years now, is just having the ability to wake up the throttle just a little bit. And so when you couple that with the new 117, this thing will flat out get it. I felt super comfortable on this motorcycle. I mean, it just, it really handled everything that I could throw at it, in, at least in my skill level. Um, and it would just did an incredible job. Now, I get in a little bit more uh, into uh, into the corners and, you know, just kind of getting the bike really leaned over whenever we went to the track with the ST. That's a whole different animal in and of itself. <laughs> But the road glide, the regular road glide, uh, did just, like I said, man, a fantastic job. And it is simply a stunning motorcycle. It's more than what I thought it was going to be. And I think another impressive thing about this bike, by the way, I'm going to be going through secrets of the road glide and the street glide in a future videos. Just talking about some of the little changes they've, they've done here. Um, and some of the, the things that aren't so obvious on the motorcycles, but they have completely redesigned this bike 
and it's a better motorcycle and it really hasn't gone up a whole lot in price. Actually, you could look at it the other way that it's almost went down in price because starting at 26, uh, you get a heck of a lot of, uh, of value there for right at 26 grand. Now, of course, if you add one of the paints, that's going to add 800 bucks, you add black pipes, that's going to add, you know, like $1,300. So you, you can add up there, but I was thinking these things were going to be north of 30 and considering everything you get, I feel like the value is actually really good, which is crazy for me to say, but I think the value is really good here considering everything they've done with the new motorcycles. And so we've talked about a lot of the big stuff they've done, but it's also the small things they've done. For example, the chopped engine guards. So it looks a lot better, right? You have the side covers, which are basically the same size, but they blacked out the bottoms of them to kind of, you know, blend in with the exhaust. So they have the appearance of being smaller. But then when you look at the lines from the bags to the side covers, to the tank, to the fairing, everything just really flows. They wanted, instead of the parts to just, you know, kind of be there, they wanted everything to kind of flow together and you really get that appearance of the bikes whenever you look at them. Another thing is they have all of the safety features now. So gone are the days where you have Road Glide Standard and then you have the specials. But on the specials, it was an option for you to get all of your safety features, the RDRS. So now all of the bikes have hill hole control, TPMS sensors, drag torque control, uh, traction control cornering ABS. It's all in. And so uh, I guess the only con there is like if you're used to buying the standard models, you're going to spend a little bit more money. But if you're used to buying the specials, um, it's actually going to come out to about the same. And that leads me perfectly into the pros and cons. Now, this is just my opinion, of course, but I like the new design headlight, the, the, the W uh, light and how they took all the bullet type of turn signals away. You know, even though you could change and upgrade those, this new design looks so much better and so much cleaner. The rear end of the bike looks cleaner and everything, like I said, just kind of all flows together. Colors, Harley is known for doing incredible colors. And, you know, not that they're all like two-tone or designed to necessarily change, but because of contours in the tank and the fairing, you know, even if you look at the white onyx pearl, right? It's gonna have like that blue tint to it when you look at it in certain directions. We've already talked about the whiskey fire. The alpine green almost looks black in the shade and then you get it out into the sunlight and it looks super dynamic as well. And so along with the new fairing, the new design, the new uh, screen operating system, obviously the safety features, love all of that stuff. New bags, I'm a fan of those as well. Even though I like stretch saddle bags, uh, these just look really good. And I like the handlebars. Uh, so, you know, I, I found this position to be really comfortable. Now, if I end up getting one of these things and taking it on a long road trip, that's going to say a lot more than even the, the good amount of riding we did in Vegas. I can't talk too much about the cooling aspect of the engine just yet, but having spoke to some of the guys that rode the, uh, the new CVOs last year, in the middle of summer, they said it actually did a really good job. So um, I'll just have to wait and see for myself how good that cooling system is, but I'm excited. And hopefully that, uh, that cooling system does as good of a job as what they say it does. And just a couple of cons, right? The docking hardware is no longer included. So on the specials, you would get that. It's 175 bucks, it's cost savings. I, I, I get that one, it's not a huge deal. Also, the new wheels, not a huge fan of them, to be honest with you. Um, I like the wheels on the ST way more than I do the standards. And then the navigation. You actually have to pay 350 bucks to have the navigation installed. So all your, all your updated maps and you know weather alerts, updates, all that kind of stuff, you actually have to pay for that. So uh, that's not uncommon, but it's also something I wish was just included into the bikes. But again... For them to get the price where it needed to be, I, I understand there has to be a little bit of give and take there. And I think all the way around, they just, they did an incredible job. So glad I had the opportunity to ride these things, man. And the Road Glide specifically 
it's still my favorite bike in the lineup. And I'll go ahead and say that even before riding the Street Glide. Uh, but the Street Glide holds a lot of cool stuff as well. So make sure that you subscribe for that review coming up. Also, the CVO Road Glide ST, that review is coming up and a lot more right here on the channel. So if you like what we do, consider subscribing. You can also join us on Patreon or join the channel right here and gain access to some pretty cool perks. Thank you guys for watching. See you in the next one. And as always, hold them down.